So I've gotten a ton of comments asking how I make my in-game overlay. So I figured I'd just make this quick video just to kind of show you guys exactly how I do it. So this might not be perfect, might not be the perfect way to do it. This isn't my usual type of content. So use this information however you want to. The first thing we want to do here is download MSI Afterburner and install it. This will also install Riva Tuner, which is what we're going to need for the overlay. The second thing we're going to need is the Open Sans font. So this is free on Google Fonts. So once you have that downloaded, you can open it up, double click the font and hit the install button. With all of that done, let's set up MSI Afterburner. There's a ton of different overclocking and other things that you can do in the software. I'm not going to cover that here. There's plenty of other tutorials out there if you're interested in it. For this video, we're focusing only on the custom overlay. So let's click the settings cog icon on the bottom left to open up the settings. Now, the first thing to look at and take note of is the GPU dropdown. Just note which number is associated with the GPU that you're wanting to monitor. For me, it's my 4090. So that's assigned to GPU two. And we're going to note that one for later. All right. So let's go to the monitoring tab in here. We can monitor all kinds of stuff. Feel free to check off whatever you want. But for this minimal overlay, I'm only going to be monitoring the GPU temp, the GPU power, and then my CPU temp and power. And lastly, the frame rate. Now let's go to the on-screen display. So make sure you have a key assigned to toggle this on-screen display in game. Mine is assigned to eight, but you know, set it to whatever you want and then click the more button at the bottom. And so this is Riva Tuner. This is what's going to give us the on-screen display with the data that we have from MSI Afterburner. I don't actually change a whole lot on this main page. I keep start on Windows and show on-screen display checked at the top. We're also going to want to set our custom font on this page. Click the Rasterize 3D button and it'll open up a list of fonts. I like to use Open Sans. That's what we installed earlier. So let's select that and then set the font weight to regular. Now we're actually going to get into the customization of the overlay. So what we need to do is click the blue setup button at the bottom and then navigate to the plugins tab. Now you should have two modules listed here. Let's check the overlay editor module and then double click into it. So this is the overlay editor. Now what we can do here is add different layers that can be customized to show different, you know, static text or get info from the data sources like MSI Afterburner. Everything that you put on here will be seen on the in-game overlay. So now let's actually get into designing it the way we want to. So the first thing we're going to add in here is our different data sources that we want to monitor in our overlay. Those are the same sources that we checked off just a minute ago. To do that, let's go into the data sources menu, then click edit. In here is a list of data sources that are available to this overlay. Your list might be blank right now, so just click the add button. Then in the data provider dropdown, click MSI Afterburner. Then check off any of the data sources that you want to use in here. Then click OK when they are selected. So now that we got all the data available to us, we just need to add them into a new layer. So insert a new layer by going to the layer menu and selecting add. Now by default, it will just have some static text in here. So let's make sure to delete that text from the text box. And then we're going to click the plus button on the right hand side. The first drop down will give us a list of data sources. Let's select the first one, which I'm going to grab the GPU temperature. And then we want to check the add current value macro box. This is going to automatically insert the short code to display that data along with the Celsius text. So I like to also superscript the Celsius text, and you can do that by just adding an S tag on each side. Now this is not HTML, so you don't need to add a forward slash to the ending tag. It's not going to work if you do that. Then you can set this text to whatever color you want by selecting the custom text color and then choosing your color. Now we can repeat that for all of the data that we want to show. And I'll just use static text for the labels. Okay, now that we have all of the data we want to display, let's work on designing the thing. So first, let's add a background container or a box so that's easier to see in game. Now it's really simple to do. Just add a new layer, remove the text in the layer, select custom background color, and then choose the color that you want. So I'm going to be setting this to white just for now. So that's easier to see in this tutorial. But after that, I'm actually going to be changing it back to black later. And then I'm also going to set the opacity to 100%. Hit OK. And now we can see our box, which now we can easily move it around and resize it. I'm going to make mine three blocks tall and then wide enough to contain all of our data here. And it might end up on top of all of the other layers that we created earlier. So in order to fix that with the box selected, you can just go to the layers menu and then click move it to the bottom. Now, the first problem we have is to get all the text to be vertically centered with this background that we just created. In order to do that, we can double click on each of the text layers. And what I like to do is I like to set the font size to 150. And then you can uncheck the resize layer to content box here. And then you can set the manual extent origin to the middle left position. From there, we can resize the layer container to also be three blocks high. And that sits it right in the middle. And now we can just apply that to all of them. So the last thing to do here is to get those rounded size to give the background a pill shape. 
To achieve this, it's pretty simple. I just use an image. So I have this black circle image here, which is 223 pixels by 223 pixels. That size is something that you're gonna wanna take note of for a step later on. And I'll also have this image linked in the description so that you don't need to make one yourself, but you can create one yourself or use whatever you want. So now we need to move this image into the RevaTuner overlay folder. You can find this folder by going to Program Files, RevaTuner, Plugins, Clients, Overlays, and then drop it in there. Then back in the editor, click on the Layouts option, click Edit, and then there's this Embedded Image option. Click Browse, find that PNG image that we just moved, or you can just type in the name of the file and it should find it in that Overlays folder. Last, we just need to add that image into a layer. So go to new layer, double click into the layer, remove the text and click the plus button. This time we're gonna be checking off the add embedded image option. You can leave the use static image option in the dropdown as default, but we do need to click into the three dots. Now this part might be a little bit weird to some people. RevaTuner puts that image into what's called an image sprite. It's just a collection of images. What you need to know is that we need to tell RevaTuner where on the image sprite our new image is. Now, by default, it should be at the top most left corner. And so all we need to do here is for those first four values on the screen, we can set each of them to zero. And then we need to input the width and height of the image, which in this case is 223 by 223. Now I'm using a white circle image here for demonstration because you wouldn't really be able to see it if I used a black one. However, I am gonna be switching this out for a black one in a moment. Now, once we press okay, we'll have an image tag generated to the text box, and then we can press okay on that dialog. So we'll just need to create two of those and put one of the circles on each side of the rectangle box to create that pill shape. And there you go. So now that everything's set up, what we're gonna wanna do now is to save this overlay so we can save it. But the last thing you can do here, if you wanna carry it over to another computer or another build in the future, you can actually export this and then import it again later. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do is go up to the layout menu option, export, name it whatever you want, and then export it. And now to see what this looks like in the future, whenever you start here from a blank slate, you can just go to layouts, import, pill overlay, open, and then there you go. And what, I'll, what else I'll do is I'll actually add my exact overlay into the description below, and you can just download it and import it yourself if you'd like to. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next one.